G'day and welcome to Inside the Pride. Well, footy season's back into the swing of things for 2013. And that means we've got an action-packed show where we can dive deeper into the Lions in the Sanctum. Here's what's to come. We meet new Lions co-captain, Jed Adcock, catch up with some new recruits, and recap round one, as well as previewing today's big clash against Adelaide. And to kick us off, here's part two of our special feature with Jonathan Brown. It's 10 years since a three-peat. Is it hard to believe that you were part of the team that was able to achieve a piece of AFL history? Uh, well, Lee used to always say to us, we're only going to win one premiership this year. Don't worry about the last, the one we won last year or the year before, so. But obviously, it's a big thing that you're trying to, to, to win three in a row. And, uh, it was a pretty, pretty tough year, and especially towards the end of the year, it looked like it wasn't going to happen. I think we only won about 14 games the regular season. Um, we just got hot in the last couple of weeks of the finals and uh, it was an amazing run actually and one of the great parties in history I reckon for about the next month after it but uh, it was amazing you know we got to Sydney <coughs> we played Sydney in the prelim final and, and uh, we just come good in the last quarter and then blew Collingwood away in the, in the grand final under enormous amount of pressure with all our injuries. Big John the club's latest campaign hit the air not long ago you're featured in it talk us through it. Well, they probably feature, feature me for me good looks, have they, Sharma? Instead of yourself. <laughs> Maybe that Lego head you got. Yeah, yeah good on you, mate. There's no mirrors at your joint. But, uh, no, no, no. The, uh, it, it does. It means, like, well, my dad, Brian, played for the Lions, and, and uh, my cousin has played for the Lions, mm. and, and now myself. And I've been involved in great memories here at the footy club. Mm. Yeah, obviously through the premiership eras, but I've had great memories for me 14 years here. And, yeah, it's been a um, special part of my life. Love the club. You know, I just want to see it get back to having some sort of success before I uh, walk off into the sunset. You come into the end of your, you know, your end of your career. <laughs> you can say, <laughs> <it>, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you come into the end. Of... <laughs> I can say. <laughs> and you're going bald. <laughs> yeah, you keep going. <laughs> I'm going bald. Yeah. <laughs> and your hair seems to be yeah. coming forward. Yeah. <laughs> and having all the work done on your face over yeah. these, you, you are looking younger, but the body is getting more tight. You know, it, my mindset is, and I just now, stage of my career, I'm happy to just play a year at a time. And, uh, and hopefully I'm still enjoying my footy at the end of every year and I just keep playing it. And, um, but, you know, a fair bit of it revolves around, obviously, number one, your performance has got to still be up to scratch. Um, but uh, two is the enjoyment of the footy, and obviously the, the biggest thing, the way you're going to get enjoyment is for you to be having team success at this stage of your career. So as long as I see that we're still improving as a club and we're starting to get towards finals, um, I'll be enjoying my footy. Um, so I'll keep playing for as long as those couple of things um, keep going, as long as Vossi wants me around. Yeah. Is coaching that be something that uh, you'd think about? Uh, probably not at the moment, but mm. uh, uh, I'm, I might probably head towards the media and just, just sit there and just pop bikes and act like an expert and tell everyone how good I was. <laughs> but no, no, I think, I think coaching would, would be in my blood, or footy's in my blood, and uh, a lot of my family have been involved in coaching, but I think I'd try and have a spell for a year or two, and um, no doubt I'd, I'd get the bug and want to get back involved in day-to-day -day affairs of, of footy clubs, but uh, as I said, I, you know, I just I really haven't thought specifically too much about post footy. I just keep playing, and, um, hopefully get us back to uh, playing some finals footy. Mm. Mate, good luck for the season. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a big one for you, a big one for the club, and uh, wish you all the best. No worries, thanks, mate. You're looking good as ever. Inside the Pride is proudly brought to you by Vero, performance measured, national storage, handled with care, and Hyundai. New thinking, new possibilities. Still to come, we meet the new faces around the club, talk to the coach about the Dogs and the Crows, and after the break, co-captain Jed Adcock. This is Inside the Pride. <music> 27-year-old Jed Adcock is the new co-captain of the Brisbane Lions. We were there for the big announcement and caught up with the new leader. Jed Adcock should be in the prime of his career and he needs to kick goals like that as a leader and he does. 
He might not be the flashiest player in the AFL, but Jed Aycock is the epitome of what the new breed of Lions stand for. The hard-working defender knows what is required as a leader, and that's clearly what his teammates and coach Michael Voss thought. Uh, he pulled me into the room with Brownie in Toowoomba on our community camp, and he told me uh, then, I had a fair idea that I was probably going to get it when he texted me in the morning saying, so I need to have a meeting with you and Brownie. Yeah, I'm alright, yeah. I'm, I'm alright, yeah. I'm uh, you ready for your 20 minute speech? No, we're not doing it, tw- you're doing it. No, no, no. no. Yeah, so I told Hayley first. Um, she was over the moon, yeah. So she was really excited, nearly blew my ear off in the phone. So um, I think she's yelling out to Lily as well, our daughter. Yeah, you told me Monday. You said we'll probably get announced Monday. Yeah. So I spoke to mum and dad Sunday, oh, and then I've oh, spoke to you and I messaged her back, and I said, oh, just hold off another day." <laughs> I messaged her again yesterday. Oh, just hold off another day again. I think it meant a fair bit to my dad, who had, I guess, put a fair bit of time into me as a kid, travelling from a small country town in Victoria, Maryborough, um, travelling 45 minutes. Jeez, we would have done it. Jeez, for seven years, uh, three to four days a week. I guess he's probably very proud. <laughs> Thanks, Rod. Cheers, mate. As a good leader, you need everyone following you. So to be able to get that spread from across the whole group um, was really important. Quite serious person as well when it comes to footy, um, on-field, off-field. So whenever I'm off-field, I'm probably not always relaxed when I'm in the footy club. I guess you'd say I've got quite a serious head on. Level three. Right, come on, I'll give it a second. Going up. Hey? You're sitting in the middle. In the middle? Yeah. In the middle, middle? In the middle. Where's Vossi? Uh, Vossi and Brownie on the side of you. Oh, I'm a so, coach now. On field, I'm definitely loud, so you'd probably say that. So, I don't know, I've been that, I've been that for a long time. I've been a very loud person when it comes to sport in general, whether it be basketball or footy, so directing and yeah, help, trying to help others. I'm definitely more talking to our teammates and trying to put them in the right position. So I think that's, once again, why another reason why I got the role was because of my being able to direct and um, understand the game plan and structures that we have at this footy club and being able to put them in the right position. Nervous, mate? A little bit, yeah, especially from in the middle. So I'm taking over the coaching role now and Vossi's going to be next to me, so, yeah. A bit nervous. Straight in. We're definitely fit enough. Yeah, don't worry about that. Um, we've definitely put the work in. We've worked hard on our skills. Um, we felt that was a big, big letdown last year. And if we could pick that up, that it would definitely help us win games. So I think we've, we're in a, in a good place. Uh, yeah, huge honour. Yeah, massive. Um, obviously, this club has a great tradition going back years, and and I guess two other footy teams as well, so with Fitzroy and Brisbane. So to be part of the three clubs coming together and be, I guess, recognised as, as a co-captain is huge on us. Very proud. The club picks players that are good blokes. You don't, this club doesn't choose players, you know, just because they can kick a footy. You've got to have the right personality, the right character to go with it, so to, to play at this footy club. And I think that's what the good thing about this club is and the good thing about these players is that we all get along really well and you end up becoming like brothers. So you've got... 45, 46, 47 brothers. To Adcock, terrific progression from the Lions. Just needs Jed Adcock to put the polish on it. And the Lions lead by seven now. At the Brisbane Lions, we love social media. Liking our fan page on Facebook or following at Brisbane Lions on Twitter is a great way to keep up to date with the latest Lions news and access exclusive behind the scenes content. You could also win some great prizes by entering one of our online competitions. Follow or like us today and remember, if you're tweeting about today's game, use the Go Lions hashtag. You're watching Inside the Pride. The 2013 sees a mix of draftees, rookies and experienced recruits join the club. And as with every big move, there's a lot to get used to. It's 
I think the key is that 87% of our players are from interstate. So homesickness is a really, a, a real relevant um, performance inhibitor. So ensuring that that is managed, that, um, that the families are engaged, that they do feel that this is a place that um, has all of those things that a family provides eventually, obviously not to the degree that a family would, but certainly as a, as a pretty good secondary. So for nine, Brent Maloney. Didn't have a massive run up, but he's easily covered the nine. Consecutive super goals for Brent Maloney and the Brisbane Lions. Brent's been amazing. He's obviously, his footy speaks for itself. He's hard, he's uncompromising, but he brings a real mentor approach to our young fellas as well, and that's his role. There's off, there's off, just here. Roll, roll, roll. More one on one stuff and being able to download all that stuff that's made him successful uh, and will continue to make him successful into our younger group. Now you fitted in nicely to, to the club and all the boys love you. Excited, exciting times ahead? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think we've got a good young list, um, especially in the midfield. We've got a good mix of young and old. It's Wrigley giving it plenty to full forward. Stefan Martin, not the first time, maybe the second. Really want to just build a really good fitness base and strength base, I guess, like everybody else. Obviously, additionally, being a new player, I want to sort of uh, earn the respect of the boys and, um, and also get to know everybody. There's no stopping us now when we hit the ground. Mum and Dad come with me and I shed a tear with them earlier just, just when it all happened and got a hug from Mum and shook me and a Dad. His attitude, his professionalism is amazing. He's um, living with um, three of the other first-year boys and he considers himself to be the captain of the house and uh, he runs that pretty well. Now Marco Paparone, I wouldn't want to be playing on him. He'd be uh, packing a cut lunch in a water bottle because he can, uh, he can run all day, the kid. Marco's the quieter guy. Um, you know, he's um, get good quality conversations with Marco as long as you prompt them. He's a ripper fellow all, all the way over from WA. He's got a really good, strong family connection and, um, yeah, we're lucky to have him. I'm living with three other first year boys, so Sam Mays, Marco Paparone and Nick Hayes. And it's been easy to live with them and been good. They've taught me a lot of things because at the start I was probably one of the messy ones. So they're bringing me up and they like to be nice and neat. So He's settled nicely closely. He's the, he's the country lad. You know? He's from 3,000 acre sheep farm and property and uh, he's brought that country mentality to the lines and there's a few other country boys here. No, loving the culture and loving the lifestyle so far. The training loads here are heaps more intense and then like the humidity up here as well compared to homes a lot more so it's taken a bit but I'm getting there, I'm starting to get used to it now. And Jordan Burke, you know, being the local lad, he sort of knew the system a little bit. He's the first guy that we've had come out of our academy into into a Lions list so that's, that's fantastic for him. Being able to stay home, having home cooked meals every night and uh, having your family there is obviously a lot easier than some of the other boys might have it. Well we think that uh, you know, there's 60 hours left in the week where they're not at the club and they're not asleep. So do you want to leave it to chance as to what they do in that time? We feel that if they're more upskilled to, to um, survive that time or thrive in that time then they're going to be pre better prepared as footballers. So yeah, we do cooking classes, we do vehicle maintenance, we, um, you know, we teach them to to manage their budgets and look after their, their home and all of those bits and pieces. So they, they all help, um, help the boys uh, in that time where they're not at the club. You know, you can have a bad training day or a bad game, but if you've got something else outside footy that balances your life, then all is not lost. But if that's all you've got, you can tend to dwell too much and not move on. And another game comes quickly. Uh, if you can't move on from the one before, then you'll find it pretty tough. So balance is really, really important. There's nothing like being at the game. This afternoon, the Brisbane Lions take on the Adelaide Crows of the Gabba at 3.40pm. It's our first home game of the year, and there are still a few tickets available at the gate. Starting at just $25.50 for adults and only $8 for kids. Better still, become a member. There are lots of options available, including three game memberships that are just $75. It's the roar of the crowd that brings out the best in the team. So become a member today and help your Brisbane Lions charge up the ladder in season 2013. For membership info, head to lions.com.au.
Yeah. New season begins right now for these two. Minson, Maloney. Maloney gets the toe on it. Martin tried to shovel it out. Got up there to Rich. Back to Maloney. Open forward line. McGrath running back. Young right with him. Bouncing ball. It might go the way. All the way home. They have belted the Brisbane Lions to the tune of 68 points. Final scores. Well, we've got to, we've got to shift into Adelaide. Um, you know, we've got, um, you know, it's, they've come off a heavy loss and, and so have we. So both sides will be looking to get a little bit of redemption out of last week's game. So, um, you know, to be able to kick start our season and we do it in our home, home venue. Um, so it's a pretty important game for us. one from outside 50. Just pops it up, hoping for Stefan Martin at full forward, fist on it. Down to Green, back to Martin. Suddenly they're finding some Sharon Rich from the pocket. Amazing. Two sensational goals has the Brisbane Lions back in it. I mean, we've, we've been comprehensively beaten contested ball. We've been comprehensively beaten uncontested marks. Um, you know, they tackle better than us, so, you know, we, uh, we were what, right royally smacked in a lot of areas, and it's just not a performance that is befitting of a, a Brisbane Lions jumper. And, um, you know, we, we had such a positive start to our pre-season, but we've also got to realise that, you know, it's round one and we get a chance to be able to come in round two and do something about it. So if we've got any sort of character about us as a, as a footy team and as individuals, then um, we want to see a response and a response we hope to get. Well, we have to. I mean, I'll, we've got to put it in context that while round one was an aberration, it's round one, and we've still got um, you know plenty to go. So uh, the season ahead, you know, we've got a long season ahead, and it's about being able to. It's a big marathon, and um, we focus a hell of a lot on round one. But uh, round two comes along seven days later, and um, we've got a new opposition, and and we've got to get our style and, and back on the bike. So uh, there will be a lot of work put in behind the scenes to make sure that happens, and we've got to put a good performance out for our fans. Yeah, it's good. It's uh, it's important. First home game of the year. It's one of our, uh, I suppose, our goals for the year is to win all our games at home and uh, to be really strong at home. So um, traditionally, it was always a tough trip for opposition teams. We want to make sure it's uh, really tough in 2013. Might be a blessing in disguise that we've got the kick up the backside in round one. Had our opportunity to uh, regroup. Three minutes and 20 to half time. Carnesis runs on nicely. Griffin tries to corral him, doesn't overcommit. Rockcliffe to McGrath on the run, got him. Yeah, Rockcliffe just got off the chain there. It'll be hot and it'll be humid, and hopefully we'll have a big home crowd on our side. Uh, so it should be an advantage for us. The guys are fit and healthy, um, and you know, I think we'll see different Brisbane lines this Saturday. Beams comes in, steps to the side, beautiful strike on the ball. And he puts it through for three in a row to the Brisbane Lions. And he'll kick from right on the paint though. That's better. This time he puts it through for his first goal for the Brisbane Lions. So I've got, got a couple of my favourite redheads. Um, what do you got for me boys? You've absolutely got nothing, have you? That's nah, yeah, got I've nothing. Got, red, got, got nothing. Yeah, no, nah, you got me on that one. Me and Todd actually share <laughs> the same colour hair. <laughs> After a loss like that and you get your backsides kicked, um, it uh, certainly sparks you up very quickly and um, the guys have already started training really well this week. You don't lose your form overnight, um, so we've just got to bring our intensity levels this week. I hope you enjoyed Inside the Pride. Don't forget, there's tickets still available for this afternoon's game at the gate. I'm Jamie Charman, thanks for watching.